Hey everyone, welcome to your sixth Roblox scripting tutorial, and in today's video we are going to be learning about instances and instance.new. So let's get right into it. The first thing I want to talk about is class name. So if we look at this part and let's just make another one, move it over here. Let's name this a uh, second part, and let's make a third one, and let's call this Rodev1000 since we just hit 1000 subscribers. And yeah, so these are our three parts. And guys, don't worry about the icons here, they are just different for me, that's not uh, too important right now. But if we look in the properties window, if we click on a part, we can see all these properties. I can call this part whatever I want. I can call this, uh, I can call this mouse, I can call this keyboard, and uh, that doesn't matter. But right here is one property called class name, and that is for every single part. This class name property is read only, as you can see it's grayed out and we can't change it and it applies to every single part. The class name is part. The class name refers to what the part really is, so it's telling us what the object's actual uh, class is. So if you didn't know, there are multiple classes and the object's class, or this part's class is part, obviously because it's a part. Spawn location has its own class called spawn location. Scripts have their own classes. This one's a script. If we insert a local script, don't worry about what it is yet, but it's a local script and it has its own class called local script. Um, you know, different kinds of objects will have different kinds of classes. For example, a tool will have a class of tool. And uh, using these class names, we can insert objects into the workspace or anywhere really using a script. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So you can open up a script in server script service by clicking plus, inserting one, and then opening it up by double clicking. And then we can get started. So obviously, we uh, know how to make variables, and that will come into play in a second here. But right now, I want to talk about instance. So instance, just like this, remember you can't name a variable instance because it is already uh, taken by Roblox. It is, you know, it's already taken because it can be used like this. So we can type instance and then we want, and then, uh, we want to type dot new and then hit uh, just the shift and nine to create two brackets. And in here, if we make speech marks, all of these will pop up. And these are all different class names uh, that we just looked at as well. As you can see, the part is here. The spawn location is also here. If I could find it, I'm not going to go looking for it right now, but spawn location is also here. And all these different kinds of uh, classes are here. For example, the tool we looked at model, camera, dialogue, decal, text button, int value. And these are all different kinds of classes. And uh, right here are different kinds of objects. So these are all different kinds of objects right here. Um, there's parts, you know, there's uh, tools, UI related things, uh, post processing effects, we have text, uh, we have all the values here, we have sounds, and all this stuff are, um, all of these uh, things are different kinds of objects, and they all have their different class names. For example, obviously that won't work, it's a bit of a different kind of object, but let's say something like a selection box. This has its own class name called selection box. And basically, we can insert all of those objects using instance.new, so we don't have to, you know, create them. If you remember, I said properties are just um, scripting is really changing properties at different times. Well, scripting can also insert different objects and change those objects' properties at different times during a game. Say you had a, a tycoon. How do you think all those parts spawn in? Well, scripts will instance them, and basically, this is how you do it. So you type instance.new. And then inside of these speech marks, you type in the class name. It even says right here, class name colon string. That means in a string, as we made right here, we have to type out the class name. So let's do a part. And there is a second parameter to this. The parameter is the parent. So we can do game dot workspace. But guys, do not use this. Uh, this is really bad practice. And it's actually to do with uh, memory and things like that. As I said in the last video, uh, global variables are also um, very bad because uh, they use RAM. But uh, that's not something we want to talk about right now. It's kind of the same thing with instance.new. If you use the second parameter, um, you know it uses uh, something else, and that's just very slow. So do not use this. It's also uh, it's also very bad practice because sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, people say that, so just don't use this. Uh, for this, what we can do is create a variable. So I'm gonna call this local new part, and we want to just assign the variable to this. So this basically just becomes our part reference. This is basically, uh, this is the same thing as typing out game.workspace. You know, uh, whatever the part is, except we're creating a part this time using instance.new. And now once the part is created, we can set all the properties. So uh, new part dot color uh, equals color three dot new. We already looked at this in a previous video. Color three dot new. We click on uh, right here. We can set a color. 
and then that's our parts color. Uh, new part dot, let's see, uh, what else do we have? Anchored equals true. New part dot can collide equals false. And so now we can walk through it. And yeah, so after you set all the properties, remember this, this is really important. After you set all the properties, we can set the parent. So new part dot parent equals game dot workspace. This is how you would do it. Let's also set the position so it doesn't spawn in here. Let's just take uh, one of our parts, move it somewhere. Now let's go to the position property and copy it. Once I have it copied, I'm going to paste it here in the script. We're going to do new part dot position equals. Now this is something this is something new uh, new for you guys. Just go along with it. Vector three dot new, and then in there you want to paste the position. So basically, vector three is uh, three coordinates, as you can see right here: the x, the y, and the z. And we're just creating a new vector three, and we're putting that to the position. So yeah, not too important, but remember you can't you can't uh, just do it like this. And obviously we're not using a string. That's why we use vector because we can't do it like this. We can't do it like in a string like that. We use a vector three dot new. We use a vector three value. So yeah, it's not too important for this video, but just do that. And as you can see, the part will be set over here. And all the properties we set are changed. Uh, we we are actually able to collide with it. That's pretty interesting. Oh, that's because there's another part there. Um, so let's just go back to the main game, move this part back to where it was, hit play. And as you can see, the new part has been created. All of these three parts are here. And the new one has been created. Uh, we didn't set the name, but it's right there. And we can walk through it. The anchored property is true, uh, as you can see right over here. The position is set to what we set in the script. And the color is set to the colors we set in the script. So that's basically how you insert objects. And remember, it does not have to uh, just be a part. We can also insert other things. For example, say well, we wanted to insert a smoke. As you can see, there's a smoke. But say we wanted to do this mid-game. We can also use an event for this, but I'm not going to do that this video. Just inside the function of the event, you can just add all of the code for the instance, and it will uh, do it. But for now, I'm just going to do the smoke. So uh, oh, let's just move all this code out to the side. I'm just going to comment it out. And we're going to create a new part. So local new part equals instance dot new. Or a new part, uh, not new part, but we're going to do local smoke or even new smoke. New smoke equals instance dot new smoke. And then from there, what we can do is... Uh, we don't have to set any properties. New spoke dot parent equals game dot workspace dot second part. Let's hit play. Or right, I'm actually gonna stop playing real quick and we're just gonna run the game instead, so we don't spawn in. But all the scripts run, and as you can see, the smoke has been inserted into the second part. Right there, it's parented to second part. The smoke's parent property, uh, right there, is set to second part. As you can see, parent is just another property, and we set it to second part. So now I do want to show you guys something really cool. This new part right here, what we can actually do is set the uh, parent of the new smoke to new part. And this is how we do it in game sometimes. As you can see, the smoke is now in here. And if we use the wait statement that we learned a few episodes ago, we can do wait, let's say four seconds. So after new part is created, four seconds later, the smoke will be added. And as you can see, there it is. And we can even, you know, wait a few seconds after the game starts. So it's like wait two seconds there. The game starts. Two seconds later, the part is created. Four seconds later, the smoke is inserted. Just like that. And that is how instance.new works. Now you guys are masters of instance.new. And yeah, you can just go through here. There's a few more things you guys can mess around with. And uh, obviously, I do give out homework at the end of videos. And we take it up next video. And for this uh, this week, we're actually going to take up uh, last week in a second here, but for this week, um, let's see, let's just, uh, I want you guys to create a chain that's like four or five instances long, and I want you guys to keep parenting them, but do this with the instance.new, and yeah, that's basically it, I'll take this up in the next video, but that's basically the homework for this week, and if this video did help you and you learned about instance.new and class names and objects and all that stuff, this video... Alright guys, I actually did the outro and completely forgot to go over the homework, but real quick, we're just going to go over how to do it. So I'm going to get rid of the decal real quick. And inside the spawn location, uh, basically what I told you guys to do is insert a point light. And uh, some of you guys said you couldn't see it, so just turn up the brightness right here. If you guys figured that out, that is really good. And you guys are advancing in scripting and studio, but yeah, just turn up the brightness. And then uh, the color we can set. So for that, let's use a script. So I'm, uh, I'm going to use the service script service one, delete all of this, and then we're going to do local. So what I would do is create a variable called local point light equals game dot workspace dot spawn location dot point light. 
point light, and then we can uh, then after that what we can do is point light dot color equals color three dot new, and then in here what we can do is set a color. And uh, actually, is there a color three dot random? Let's find out. Okay, there isn't. Uh, for brick color, there is a random uh, brick color dot random, but for this there isn't. So yeah, it's basically how you guys would have done the homework. You have done this. You would have gone down. You got done a weight. Gone down. Done another color like. For example, yellow, and then uh, done this again. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it this time. Uh, we let's just do 0 0.5 seconds. Oh, that did not uh, work the way I wanted it to. I'm just gonna drop down a line. There we go, and I'm just gonna hit run. And there we go, it's working. And this is basically what the homework was. This is the answer to the homework. Um, I'm just gonna delete a bunch of this. But yeah, this is basically the answer to the homework, just using weights and then setting the color after. Yeah, it's, it's pretty simple, and uh, yeah, if you use a variable to get the point light, that's very good. That's kind of what we learned in that video for 16 minutes, so. But other than that, guys, I think the outro is after this, so I'm not going to do an outro right now, but yeah, I'll see you guys. Uh, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, if, uh, you know, just to let me know it did work. And yeah, we've hit 1,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's Rodev. Peace.